Hello everyone, welcome to the Lightning Ball channel. Starting from this episode, we will start to review Tensura Light Novel Volume 11. In the previous episode, Maria Bel Rosso not only failed to defeat Rimuru, but was killed by Yuki Kagurazaka, who had a grander scheme, and Maria Bell's unique skill, greed was stolen by Yuki. On the other hand, despite Maria Bell's failure, the Rosso family didn't give up and was secretly planning a more sinister scheme. In this episode, we will talk about how the three beautiful primordial demons, and Dino, one of the Octogram Demon Lords, joined the Monster Federation. Let's get started. After Rimura's permission for recruiting some subordinates, Diablo, the primordial black, traversed through the gates of hell, reaching the spiritual daemon realm known as the Netherworld or Hell, and became a violent incarnation wreaking havoc in the demonic realm, continuously slaughtering those demons who deemed themselves powerful, thereby causing a storm in the netherworld. The weaker ones chose to flee early, while the more powerful demons banded together to fight back. However, in Diablo's eyes, this was nothing but a futile struggle of the weak. Diablo noticed that during his absence from the netherworld, a large number of insignificant beings had proliferated, collecting too many of them would be of no use so he decided to quickly meet with his acquaintances. Diablo was contemplating that his Rimura-sama would definitely be satisfied with his acquaintances. Thus, Diablo activated teleportation magic and disappeared into thin air, leaving behind only the wreckage of the overconfident fools. It should be noted that, in the netherworld, demons have no power limitations, but to break these restrictions in the physical world, demons need a physical body. This was also the reason why Diablo requested Rimura to prepare 1,000 vessels. On the other hand, after the battle against Maria Bell and Yuki, a brief period of peace arrived at the Monster Federation. Although Rimuru and others made emergency preparations to prevent any actions from the ruler of the Rosso family, Grand Bell Rosso, a month passed by and Grand Bell remained silent. Seizing this peaceful period, so Yai utilized the information in hand to grasp the intricacies of the western countries, while Rimuru started inspecting various research facilities, grappling with new problems arising from joining the western council. However, one day, a person suddenly arrived in Rimuru's nation. Following Shuna's report, in the reception room, one of the strongest beings in this world, Dino, was lounging on the sofa in a nonchalant manner. Even upon seeing Rimuru's arrival, Dino showed no intention of getting up, simply greeting them while remaining reclined. Shuna frowned slightly in displeasure, but Rimura had no choice and sat beside him. After all, Dino was one of the Octogram Demon Lords. After some brief exchanges, the conversation shifted to the reason for this visit. Dino straightforwardly mentioned that he came to play with Rimuru. Rimuru was stunned for a moment, not knowing what to say. Shuna, acting as if nothing had happened, quickly arranged some refreshments, bowed, and left the room. The atmosphere in the room became awkward. Through the following conversation, Rimura learned that Dino was actually kicked out by Demon Lord de Gruel. Originally, Dino, being a Demon Lord without a home, had been residing in the country of another Demon Lord, Giant King de Gruel, but was recently expelled. Due to being penniless, Dino had to come to Monster Federation for temporary shelter. The real reason, however, was a recommendation from this world's strongest, Gi. Dino handed a letter to Rimuru which, judging by the seal and aura on the envelope, undoubtedly came from Gi himself. The letter contained just one sentence. You take care of Dino. Clearly, this was likely because Gi didn't want to deal with these troubles when Dino found him so he simply sent Dino to Rimuru. Thinking of the terrifyingly powerful Gi, Rimuru could only try to figure out a way to handle this issue. After some deliberation, Rimuru decided to appoint Dino as Ramaris's assistant, working together in the labyrinth. In the 100th floor of the labyrinth, there was a dedicated research facility, where individuals like Veldora, Ramaris, and Vesta were conducting research, and the recent topic of research was a new type of cultivation capsule. Earlier, after accepting Diablo's request for finding subordinates, Rimuru had to prepare thousands of vessels for Diablo's underlings due to the necessity of physical bodies for demons to exist in the material world. Hence, Rimuru came up with a brilliant solution, the 1,000 cultivation capsules in front of them which, 
as the name suggests, could cultivate creatures like monsters within. For instance, if a snake was placed inside, it would die due to being unable to withstand the high concentration of magicules in the cultivation fluid, its body would dissolve into the fluid and eventually be reborn as an A-grade monster, the Tempest Serpent. In other words, as long as there's enough cultivation fluid, producing A, grade monsters was an easy task. Now, the capsules contained humanoid skeletal dolls made of draconic magisteel, which is an enhanced version of magisteel created using Veldora's magicules through experimentation. Its strength is higher than orichalcum but slightly lesser than divine steel, a hurricane. Within the chest of these dolls, a special crystal known as the spirit core, which acts as a heart, was releasing its unique pulsations. These large puppets were nearing completion, and would be ready for use in a few more days. As a reward for this research, these vessels would first be given to the subordinates of Ramaris, the Treants, as well as Veldora's assistants, the greater elemental Ifrit, whom Rimura had acquainted within his stomach earlier. On a side note, under the intervention of the storm dragon, Ifrit, who was reborn, had turned into a true beauty with long, glossy black hair, tan skin, golden eyes, and a magnificent bust, adorning herself in a super-sexy Middle Eastern attire, exuding an alluring aura. The storm dragon personally named her Cherise, allowing her to evolve into a demon lord-level flame lord. Thus, Rimuru's forces increased by many hands, making the busy days gradually become more leisurely. A few days later, Diablo returned. With a smile of joy, Diablo entered the reception room, indicating, as per the agreement, he had brought individuals who would appeal to Rimura-sama. Diablo expressed that it would be an unspeakable joy for him if Rimura could take a look at these individuals. Diablo, as usual, greeted Rimura respectfully. As the conversation ended, three young ladies entered following Diablo. They were true beauties, yet appeared to be normal humans and not very strong. However, the Lord of Wisdom indicated that all three ladies were archdemons. Rimura could not help but express his astonishment at the remarkable strength of these three beautiful women, as even the holy knights couldn't see through their disguise of being archdemons. Hearing this, the three showed a bit of surprise, while Diablo chuckled joyfully, uttering his iconic phrase. As expected from Rimura-sama, you see through their disguise so easily making Remura slightly embarrassed. Later, Diablo mentioned that there were another seven exceptionally capable lieutenants in total who could be of use, with the rest being their subordinates. Upon saying this, a beautiful woman with white hair among the three rose and bowed respectfully to Remuru. Nice to meet you, Remuru sama Although I am a nameless and unworthy individual, it's an immense honor to meet you. Initially, I found it hard to believe when I heard that Black was infatuated with someone. Now I understand. From the moment I saw you, the palpitations within my chest haven't ceased. Myself, along with my two hundred subordinates, sincerely wish to serve under Ramuru sama The white-haired beauty declared with a blossom-like smile. Subsequently, the other two demons, one with purple hair and the other with dazzling blonde hair, also declared their desire to join Remura's team with their respective 200 subordinates. In summary, these three demons, each with two lieutenants and 200 subordinates, along with an interesting individual Diablo found, who also had 100 subordinates, amounted to 700 subordinates in total that Diablo brought back to the Monster Federation. Upon Diablo's command, the seven lieutenants and 700 subordinates kneeled behind Diablo and the three women, emanating an eerie aura. Especially among the seven lieutenants, six had reached the level of Archdemon. Their magicule level was on par with Diablo's before he was named. The remaining lieutenants seemed to be a special entity, exuding the aura of a greater demon. What intrigued Remura more were the initial three beautiful women. Although they were Archdemons as well, they could make demons of the same rank submit to them, indicating they probably possessed other special abilities. According to the Lord of Wisdom, archdemons varied depending on the era they were born in. Those who had survived for more than 3,000 years were classified as prehistory species, over a thousand years as ancient species, over 400 years as medieval species, 
beyond a hundred years as early modern species, over thirty years as modern species, and the newly born as late modern species, with the pinnacle being defined as primordial demons. Those who could serve as ruling class were typically ancient species, duke-level demons and above. Rimuru came to a realization that not only the initial three beauties but Diablo too was a duke-level demon. Rimuru shivered slightly in surprise, as he had always thought Diablo was just an ordinary demon. However, Diablo, oblivious to Rimuru's reaction, began to ramble on about the process of gathering subordinates. As Diablo's words came to an end, over seven hundred demons kneeled down together, pledging loyalty to Rimuru, declaring from this moment forth, they would be loyal servants of demon Lord Rimuru, ready to obey any command. Diablo looked satisfactorily at the demons who were pledging their allegiance, nodding continuously. Meanwhile, Rimuru quietly heaved a sigh of relief within. Then, utilizing Beelzebuth, he devoured the demons, and with the Lord of Wisdom, assimilated them with the spirit cores housed within the doll bodies in the cultivation capsules, thus granting these spiritual life forms their own flesh bodies. Interestingly, due to Diablo's close acquaintance, the three beauties received special treatment from Rimuru, who not only upgraded their body materials to a higher-grade divine steel, a hurricane, but also personally assisted in adjusting their skeletons and appearance. Just after Rimuru had finished everything, finding it inconvenient without a name, a group of spectators, Dino, Ramaris, Veldora, and others emerged all at once. However, the sight of the demon legion becoming corporeal surprised them all, and their faces unveiled astonishment. All were amazed at Diablo managing to summon such a number of demons. Ramaris and Veldora exclaimed repeatedly, pointing out that those three beauties over there seemed to have lived for a long time, even Dino nodded in agreement. Rimura later explained that they were of the ruling class called Ancient Species, who had survived for over a thousand years but Ramaris still expressed confusion upon hearing this. It was then that the demon Lord Rimuru realized, while a thousand years was long, two thousand or even thirty thousand years were also over a thousand years. Perhaps these demons had existed longer than the so-called human world they now resided in, hence why even the oldest beings like Veldora and Ramaris were surprised. Thinking this, the demon Lord Rimuru stated that it was impolite to ask a female's age, and in any case, how long they had lived wasn't really important. What matters was that powerful demons of the ruler class had become companions, and that was a good way to think about it. Upon hearing Remura's remarks, Diablo began his own flattery once again, with the phrase, as expected from Remura-sama, resounding once more. Diablo expressed that what mattered was not the length of life, but the quality of life lived. Seizing Diablo's meaning, Remora nodded. Ramaris and others seemed convinced, and no further words were spoken. Soon after, due to the inconvenience of being nameless, Remora named the white-haired, purple-haired, and blonde women Testerosa, Ultima, and Carrera respectively. Just that moment, Dino, the newcomer, began to panic, ready to stop Remora, but it was already too late. The moment they heard Remora's naming, the three archdemons achieved corporeality their golden skeletons covered in flesh, instantly becoming embodiments of beauty. They dressed in clothing transformed from magicules, their colossal aura erupting from within, the cultivation capsule shattered into pieces, revealing a power overwhelmingly different from before. Even former demon lords, Beast King Carrion and the likes were no match for them, these were beings of another dimension, lords of Daemon, aka demon peers. For clarity, we will uniformly use demon peer, to replace. Lord of Demon, in the following reviews. Dino, failing to prevent this, sat on the ground moaning, but no one paid him any heed. After all, for those who had spent a longer time with Rimuru, the act of naming monsters had become commonplace. And so, for the next few days, Rimuru spent his days naming individuals. Among the seven lieutenants, two became demon peers while the other five remained as archdemons. Although their rank remained the same, the limitation of their levels had been lifted, presenting a completely different aura. Seeing these powerful demons, even Rimuru was a bit overwhelmed. After all, Demon Pier was a being rumored to surpass demon lords and legends, and now in Monster Federation, including Diablo, 
there were six demon peers, vastly amplifying their combat power. But what could they do with such a sudden increase in strength? Rimuru initially only wanted to find talents adept in political and economic affairs. Could these demons perform such tasks? Rimuru decided to inquire later. Rimuru-sama, being granted such wonderful names and power by you, brings us boundless joy. Please allow us to serve you henceforth. The white-haired beauty Testerosa pledged on behalf of all the demons. Rimuru nodded and quickly found an excuse to leave, entrusting the task of educating the demons to Diablo. While Rimuru escaped reality, Testerosa and the other two demon ladies chatted about Rimuru and the Monster Federation. Unbeknownst to Rimuru, these three beauties initially had no intention of pledging allegiance. It was only due to negotiations by the acquainted Diablo, they decided to check out the individual capable of subduing primordial black ready to kill him on the spot if dissatisfied. Not only did Ramuru-sama see through our true nature, he even deemed us inconsequential. Despite that, the ancient demon lord named Dino turned pale at the sight of us. Ultima joyfully remarked. Yes, yes, it's quite interesting. With flushed cheeks, Testerosa who was still spellbound murmured. These three demons, having lived for a long time, were among the strongest in this world. They had experienced an extended period of time, achieving undefeated legends. Even their subordinates were so, mostly maintaining hundreds of years of invincibility, some even possessing power second only to the primordial. Yes, what Diablo carefully orchestrated to bring were such strong individuals who could shine even among the demon clan. Yet Rimuru, ignorant of this and acting on his usual whims, bestowed them bodies and names all at once, resulting in these demons here gaining power beyond the laws of the world. Then a legion unimaginable to common folks was formed. From the moment the demons awoke from the cultivation capsules, the Monster Federation's ultimate force, the terrifying symbol known as Black Core, was born. Thereafter, the Monster Federation officially became the first law-governed nation in this world. With Testerosa acting as Remura's full-fledged diplomatic military officer, Ultima as the inspector general scrutinizing domestic evils, and Carrera as the chief justice adjudicating affairs fairly, the system of checks and balances began to set a precedent, spreading widely, bringing profound impacts to this world. Thus, quite unintentionally, Remuru recruited three more primordial demons, and in doing so, four out of the seven primordial demons came to serve the Monster Federation. One of the most intriguing parts of reading Tensura is witnessing the astonishment displayed by the world's strong when they come face to face with the prowess of Remuru's subordinates. As for why the three primordial demons chose to serve Remuru, there are many discussions. Personally, I believe that firstly, primordial demons can perceive the strength of a soul, and evidently, Rimuru's soul strength far surpasses that of the primordial demons. Secondly, Diablo's recommendation played a part, and lastly, Rimuru's generous offering of bodies and names, which is not a trivial matter for demons, was also a compelling factor. We will delve into this in the subsequent stories. Well, that is all for this video, and in the next episode, we will discuss Luminous Invitation and the latest movements of the Rosso family. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.